Let's talk about the marketplace a little bit around around uh, in-stream video in terms of, you know, you were on the, a premium publisher at ESPN. Um, in terms of um, advertising, did you guys sell your own? Did you go with ad networks? Can you talk a little bit about sort of the ecosystem of the, on the buy side? Yeah, I mean, I'll tread, li I'll tread lightly there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> certainly appreciate my, my colleagues at ESPN and, and, and um, you know, they, they were not working with ad networks and then they're very vocal about that. And I think that there are few companies can actually can make that stance and the fact that they have complete ownership of their content because scarcity, scarc scarcity or not, um, often it does help media companies to partner with a tremor, to partner with another distribution partner um, or an audience partner to be able to kind of scale their, their, um, their content. Um, and as they scale their content, they can create and offer more flexibility with regards to CPMs, right? So if you can lower your CPMs down to a level that is perhaps more palatable and on a level playing field with TV, when you do the translation, however you want to do the translation, the translations are done in a variety of different ways depending upon your methodology. But once you can get to that level, then that perhaps can open up the volume of dollars because that has always been the kind of pushback, the fact that it is a little bit more efficient to buy TV. Well, yeah, how does that work, the whole ad network and CPMs and your, your point of view on that? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, uh, first of all, I, I think everybody would agree, even the ad networks, that there are too many ad networks, <laughs> you know, and um, there needs to be consolidation in that space because they're all chasing, not all of them, I don't want to typecast, but a lot of them are chasing the same inventory. Uh, and I think that, you know, when you have the opportunity of an ad exchange where you can take and start with the audience and buy those attributes that make up your audience, target and then layer and put the impression on top of that, um, that's a pretty compelling way to go to market. And you know, we've seen when we do that that uh, I'm not I'm generalizing a little bit, but on the ad network space that it will outperform them because we're being much more particular about the audience layers that we're putting on there and we're doing the work ourselves, you know, and we're going direct to get that inventory versus, you know, paying them to go and get the inventory on our behalf and maybe not applying as finite of a, of a targeting layer to it. I'm going to get a lot of emails after saying that. Um, or text. E or text, right, or <laughs> tweets. Um, so I, I, that said, I think the ad networks still have a, have a place in, in, in our plan and in, in our space because you can't, you know, alone depend on an ad exchange to do what you need it to do. Um, ad exchanges work very, very well on direct response and acquisition. We're getting better on the awareness side every day. But what the ad network can still do is get you very, very efficient reach, uh, you know, in a very large quantity in a short period of time. Yeah, Jason, look, I mean, yeah. uh, for me, it's very simple. Uh, and I, we haven't talked about this before. I'll ask these two guys if there's two questions that anyone who's buying advertising should ask of an ad network when, when they call. One, how are you going to prove that my advertising is successful, right? Okay. Is that a fair first yeah. question? Yeah. And the second one, show me the site list that is exclusive only to you. Sure that no one else can have access to except that site. Are those two fair yeah. starting points? Absolutely. That's all, the, the, once you do that, then you can evaluate everyone else so equally. But pre some premium publishers uh, are going themselves, like ESPN, CBS, what is the dynamic, what do you, you know, why will that, What's the sort of the barrier? Or what's the, the the conversation? Well, there? look, there, there's no problem with that, right? I mean, there's very few of those companies, as James just said. How many ESPNs are there? Their most likely competitor is here. The rest of the world in that space is down here, right? So, if you can do that, that's fantastic. Like I, you know, if you could get, uh, there are certain elements that we don't have to serve. If uh, if I'm Philly cream cheese, I am buying every single thing that Paula Dean <laughs> can let me sponsor with her. It's there you can't get. I, I'd put every commercial I have there. But if you're going to come ask us, we'll sell you something completely different. We'll put the real women of Philadelphia in front of the people who really only want to watch that content, right? I mean, so there's two different things that are going on. As we said before, it's not a zero sum game, and there are publishers like like that who don't want to work with networks. Absolutely okay with that. We really are. What we're doing with them when they get more video impressions, if you can't make more money off that or you don't have a sales team, we can help increase what you're doing. We can add money to what you're doing. It'll fund more projects that you're working on. Uh, and we only bring brand advertisers to the equation. To our earlier point, why? Because this is expensive. We do not have direct response advertisers buying. We only have brands that everyone is comfortable with putting on their website. And they name the price to us, right? What a display network has done in the past 
a banner network is completely different than what a video yeah, I agree. company looks and like. And I want to clarify, when, when you ask a question about networks, I'm, I'm talking about display networks. I'm not yeah. necessarily talking about the video network. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any last thoughts, James? Well, you know, just kind of building off the ad network discussion, I think the ad networks that are going to survive are going to be more than just brokers of inventory and investing in smarter technology, helping with ad formats, really mm -hmm. doing things to diversify their offerings so that they're just not a middleman. Some of the better ones like Tremor have done that. Yeah. Thank cool. you.